go here. Uh, well, let me start credit to Ohio State. Um, that's a good football team, well coached, but they played hard, talented, kind of as we expected. Um, I do think in the first half, we did not help ourselves with just some self-inflicted, turning the ball over a couple of times. I mean, opening drive, go down. Well, first of all, their opening drive, find a way to get them to hold them to a field goal in the red zone, which would take against that team. Go down there, it's fourth and one hour. 20 going in, we can't get that done. Fast forward, we, you know, we turned the ball over twice uh, in the, our red zone going in again, and that was, that was painful. We got an opportunity to make a stop in the end zone on defense, drop an interception. Uh, and then even they, they score late to make it 24-7 at the half on a you know punt that we gotta be better on. Field position's pretty good. They go down and, and separate the thing, and so missed opportunities uh, in the first half. You know, And then the third quarter, we did not come out and Get anything done, turn the thing over, give them a short field, and then kind of separate from there. And so, again, that's a good football team. I did tell our team, I didn't feel like there was a bunch of snaps out there that we were just overwhelmed. Oh, they got too much talent. They're too physical. That's a really good team, one of the best teams in the country. But trying to encourage our guys that we can go toe to toe if we can finish on some things and get back to some details on, on ball security and getting off the field on third down. So, Appreciate the crowd. I did think, you know, I'll say it again, recognizing Mark Tantonio uh, was special last night. And then even, you know, the class act that he is bumping into him before I walk over here. Uh, what, a, what a big time person, coach, that this place uh, was awesome to recognize him this weekend. No questions? Jonathan, I know you just kind of went over those missed opportunities, but, you know, what's the mood like at halftime when, when they have, what, a 17-point lead and they easily, I mean, it could have been, you know, yeah. the other way, you know, tie game, you guys are in heaven. Yep, um, we didn't dwell on that. Obviously, we talked a little bit about, you know, we got to tighten up in our ball security. Talked about wanting to win the third quarter. If we could win the third quarter by a point, point total, whatever that was, it'd be within reach in the fourth, and we didn't get that done. Chris? Two instances in particular. First, the, the fourth down decision early in the game, the 20 wide go, fourth there, and uh, is that a kick to field goal tie it? Uh, I'll hold for the second. Going into the game felt like, you know, and field goals against this team, this offense, was not going to you know, give us the best chance to win. And honestly, on fourth and one, I'm, I'm going to be overly aggressive. These guys know that, uh, and we need to go get that done. And the other one, you mentioned the, the near interception and the lead cat. The play before that with, with Woods at the goal line where he stripped the ball, did you did you guys get any look at that to see whether or not to challenge it? Um, I saw a quick replay on it. In my mind, they're looking at that stuff. And then also in my mind, if they would have called that a fumble, well, that mean he would have possessed it. He was right on the goal line. I don't think they'd turn it into calling it a touchdown. You follow me? Yeah. And so that's why I did not challenge it. Uh, coach, this season, 16 points per game in the first half. Uh, in the second half of games, five points per game. Uh, how do you go about fixing that in the future for next week? Yep, we got to you know, look at whether it's tendencies, adjustments we're making. We got to, you know, both those point totals, to be honest with you, is not where we want it to be. And so, again, work process. We got a short week here, and we'll take a look at this film and look at, uh, at ways we can we can improve, but we got to be able to score more than that. Overall, Aiden Child's really bounced back from that DC game. Uh, first six passes were all on the money, mm -hmm. um, and then that one fumble in the red zone. Looks like he had a face mask and he was executed to it. So, yep. just what did you think of his? I did. I, I'm with you. I thought he was throwing the ball really well in the first half, seeing it. Uh, the protection was there, and you know, we were down a guy or two in the whole lineup, but those guys were holding up for him. Uh, guys were making plays, catching, run after catch. I mean, Belling's route, he's running an option route. He creases inside. That's a perfect throw. He's continuing down. Good, good by Ohio State. Defender from behind uh, puts it down. But overall, in the first half, we were yeah, pleased with, with Aiden's play. And, and how, you know, Good is that to see just the progress be able to bounce back after a tough outing and go up against one of the nation's best defenses in the past. Yeah, he's competitive. That you know, the group's you know competitive and gonna have some ups and downs, just like every player on this team, every coach will be able to respond back. And I thought he came in with a great mindset tonight. Do you leave this game uh, more encouraged or discouraged? Like, obviously you're competitive against them in a lot of ways. Where this goes in yeah. or or do you, and so do you leave thinking we're not that far away or? Uh, right well, now? I think thirty eight seven. We're, we're far away because it is in the details and it is in these turnovers. Again, I'm, 
we're going to continue to work credit to those guys. 38 7 is not that close because at the end of the day, it is about the scoreboard. But there will be plenty of staffs that will watch of this game that we're, we're right there and guys are making some plays and playing awesome effort I thought defensively. Uh, they got some good athletes out there and, and we try to go toe to toe. And so you're you know, encouraged by that. What is your biggest positive you take away from this game? And then what did you tell your team in the locker room after the game? Yeah, uh, it's tough to say but what's the biggest um, you know, positive. I did think the effort was there. The execution wasn't uh, you know, in, in that. Um, uh, biggest positive is if these guys will go back to work, because we've got a short week, and be able to learn from this and continue to move forward. That would be the biggest positive. Jonathan, 17-7 uh, before the shank punt, and Jeremiah Smith makes those incredible catch. catches. Yeah. What do you tell your DBs? It looked like they were in position, and you just... Yeah, sometimes you want to continue to be in position, and let's face it, this is big-time college football gets a big-time... They're going to make a, a play or two. You look at some other snaps where you could have you know, executed better on other plays to not give them the opportunity you know, one-on-one -on -one with some of these guys. Uh, they're going to make their fair share of plays. Uh, Jonathan, um, this is not to be critical, but to be curious. You said yourself, one of the top programs in the country. You had a week to prepare and play them tonight. Can you talk about differences and similarities between the two programs? Well, the differences, they, they made some plays. They did a pretty good job with the, taking care of the ball. I know we got the one, the one pick. Um, there's, you know, uh, I do think both teams play pretty hard. And even Coach Day talked about it after the game, and the uh, effort they're, they're playing, there's similarity there. Right. Yeah, after five weeks, I mean, what, what do you think the potential of this team is if they can get rid of the self-inflicted mistakes? Yeah, we, we're going to compete with just about anybody we line up with. If we clean that up, and we're going to be in every ball game uh, with, with a chance a chance to win it, if we can clean up some of the turnover piece and get, get off the field third down. And uh, this week, how important is it for the rest of the season, you know, given the fact that you guys have lost two straight, what you got going forward? Yeah, every week's important. Um, it's it's going to be a short week. And again, we're reloading, recovering, uh, getting our mind uh, flipped to a, another really good opponent, talented, uh, talented opponent. Right here, Brian. Coach, you mentioned Jeremiah Smith and the one-handed catches. I'm obviously you probably watched him on on film leading up to the game as advertised. I mean, how and how do you go at a guy like that? Yeah, you want to challenge him. Sometimes you want to affect the passer more than you know just affecting that one-on-one -on -one matchup or double teaming them if you can get the quarterback off the spot. But again, they got weapons in multiple spots, schematically. Chip, Brian, those guys do a good job, and so it's a tough task. John, to be shot, obviously no uh, stamp today. Um, just well, I was wondering what you thought of the offensive line with moving. You got Rakeem making his first start, and then another true freshman playing behind him. Just yeah. what you thought of that combination? Without totally studying it, I didn't feel like they were getting overwhelmed out there. I thought times that they had some good protection, um, you know. So that's my initial thinking. I'm not sitting there with the iPad uh, digesting the film. I'll do that tomorrow. Got time for a couple more. Starting with Chris here. Nick obviously played the one drive. I guess his situation and status. Uh, Marsh. Yeah, Marsh. And, and I guess. It looked like he made some plays, but why not go back with him? Yeah, he, uh, his status, you know, he, he was clear to play. He did not practice much at all this week, and so we really didn't know. We felt a little bit better, actually, it was yesterday, and then through, you know, pregame. And so when a guy misses that much time, it's a huge ask for him to, to go out there and run uh, all, all the reps, especially going you know, off last week, this week, very minimal reps. Um, and so I think that, that was the thinking on him. Steven. Right here. I'm just wondering, as a former play caller, when the run game just hasn't found enough traction yet, how difficult is that as somebody in the position? Just other fixes or workarounds? Yes, yeah, it's you know it, it's hard. I did think we had some good creases tonight. Uh, you know, even in the opening play, I think Nate, you know, creases the thing. Our downhill run game had some stuff. Uh, we you know when we try to get outside a few times, you know, get in in the backfield, it makes it hard uh, as a play caller, but that's our role. Like, we got to figure out ways to do it better. Brian's not alone. That offensive staff been around it. They, they know what they're doing, and we got to continue to work to get better. Jim, did you have one? Oh, I, go ahead. Oh. Uh, just wondering, like, they, they open with, obviously, a lot of the underneath throws and, and all that, but the, the inability to get pressure on, on Howard and third down, I guess, what, you know, what you see there? Yeah, I mean, you got a good front there, and you got to – 
you know, pick and choose here on pressuring the guy, and then you're gonna, you know, leave yourself a lot of one-on-one -on -one and space up on the edges of it. Um, again, I did feel like we wanted to force them to earn it, put longer drives together and execute eight, 10, 12, and then they did it uh, a few times. We didn't have a bunch of the 60, 70 yard touchdowns that we've been watching on tape. Yeah, last one. So Aiden Childs had a nice first half. Second half, a couple of those middle screens or late leaks or whatever those were. Just what, I know he's yeah. got pressure on them, but how would you? Uh, yeah, interception. He's going to his left, which isn't ideal. He's got a guy up in his face. He's trying to lob it over to him. Again, we're trying to action pass when we're down three, four scores, and so it's it's tough. I did think he had a few uh, good decisions thrown the thing away uh, throughout the night, but on that that one pick, I wanted a great scenario for him, and uh, maybe chucking that out of bounds instead of trying to trying to get Jack. Thanks, Sergeant.